We're looking at algebra tiles, and we're going to look at how we can use these algebra tiles to help us represent some algebraic concepts. So just to define these tiles, the positive tiles are going to be represented by these squares, the large squares. And the x squared is the area. Same with x. The, x, the algebra tile values x squared and x represent the areas of these tiles. So the length of this tile is x, the width of this tile is x, and the area is x squared. So it's important to understand when we're dealing with the length and width or the products or the factors versus the product or the, the, the actual calculation, okay, which is x squared. So here the area is x, the length is 1, the width is x. Okay, so it's important to, again to recognize the length and width of this. And for the negative ones, it's just all going to be the opposite. We're going to have length of x, width of x. The area is going to be x, negative x squared. And here again, the area here is negative x squared. The length is 1, width is x. So these colors are kind of arbitrary. And for the most part, as long as you're consistent with how you uh, label these, Okay, I've tried to keep these colors consistent with the textbook. However, if you want to just keep, uh, when you do these on your own, you either shade or don't shade and keep one of them positive and the other one negative. And just as long as you're consistent with it, I'll be able to tell if it's being done correctly. So these are our variable tiles. Okay, our small tiles are going to have an area of 1, which means that they have a length of 1, a width of 1. Okay, and the red squares are going to, little red squares are going to represent negatives. And it's important to understand that we cannot line up a bunch of 1's tiles along the x. It won't match. Okay, and it's they're done for a purpose because we don't want to ever say that there's some number of 1's that will match up with the, the x tile here, the length along x. Okay, so please try not to arrange your tiles in that way. We always make the, tile, the edges that match, match up with each other. Okay, so here we have an algebraic expression, x squared plus 2x minus 1. There are three different types of terms here, and the like terms we can combine together. And the like terms are going to be represented by the same shape. So we have 3x squared, so we have three of these x squareds. We have two x tiles, which are different from the x squareds, so they have a different shape. So we have these two x's, and then the negative one is not only a different shape, but it's also a different color because of the negative involved. So this is how we're going to define these tiles. So when we have these, these, tile, these expressions here, we want to be able to show them with tiles. So since we probably don't have color. If you have color, that's great. But if you don't have color, we're just going to draw these tiles as shaded as positive and white as negative. So there is an x squared tile. Okay, we're just going to shade that in. And since it's two x squareds, we have two groups of x squareds. So we're going to have it look like that. We have one x. Okay, so that we have to use a different shape for that. We're going to shade that in for positive, and then we have five ones tiles. Again, they are different. It's a different term, so we need a different shape for that. And then we're going to have five of those. Okay, so these, although it says x squared, x, really we're just counting the number of shapes. So same thing here. We have one x squared, so I'm going to draw one square, one large square, and I'm going to shade it to indicate that that one is positive. Oh, sorry. Uh, yeah. And this one here is going to be three x's. So I'm going to arrange this three x's like this. And I have two ones tiles. Now, <clears throat> we should really use algebra tiles because then we, with algebra tiles, we can rearrange them into different shapes. 
And really what we're looking at is can these be arranged into rectangles because rectangles are a nice regular shape and rectangles allow us to see if there's a length and width or in other words is it factorable so if I were to rearrange these tiles I could maybe rearrange these tiles like this I can put this edge length again we only put the X's edges together and the ones edges together but since we can arrange it like that we can actually put the ones tiles here so the, note that the ones edges match here on the width and length and we can actually put all our tiles in a rectangular shape the nice thing about that is if it's a rectangular shape we know that this has a length and width and if it has a length and width we can write it as multiplication because these are the area pieces yeah I've got the area of x squared plus 3x plus 2 that can be made by using a length and width and the length along this edge here is going to be x remember that the area is x squared so the length and width is x here so along the vertical I have x and I have 1 so it's going to be x plus 1. Along the horizontal, I have x, and then I have 1 and 1. Okay, so along that horizontal, I have x plus 2. So if I were to write this as a multiplication, I could write this as x plus 1 times x plus 2. Okay, these are factors now because I've grouped them into brackets. And that multiplication of length times width gives me an area of x squared plus 3x plus 2. So I'm just going to write this in. This is my length times width. And that must equal oops, that must equal my area okay, and remember we define these tiles x squared 3x and 2 as the area pieces so there it is we can we are able to arrange these tiles in rectangles and since we can arrange in rectangles that means that these this area or shape is factorable